This is Dante Williams. Are you watching? Dante's. 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 Boxing Nation. This is Showtime. Sean Porter. Filipino Flash. Jesse Burgess. This is Al Bernstein. You're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. I am sure we're ready to check Shane. Sergio the last name, Moore. Dante, Dante, Dante's Boxing Nation. Boom, 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 boom. Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from Wilder. My name is Gennady Golovkin. And you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Hi, this is Julian Jackson, and this is Dante Boxing Nation. This is Julian Jackson, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. <laughs> All right. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Well, of course, I wanted to get my thoughts on some devastating news today. It was just reported about an hour ago that the greatest Muhammad Ali, he passed away today at age 74. Today is June 3rd, 2016, a day that a lot of us will definitely remember. I'm still kind of shocked, you know, just thinking about it. it it's, it's hard to believe. And there's been so many times where Muhammad Ali, he was rushed to the hospital, you know, and he fought like a champ and always made it back home. Tonight, that wasn't the case. And it was his time. I mean, age 74, I will say, you know, he lived a great life. I hate the fact that Parkinson's, you know, that disease, it kind of took away the many years that we could have heard Muhammad Ali call fights, give his thoughts, you know, with him being so brash and him loving to be so vocal. It would have been awesome to get to hear his thoughts on all the fights from decade to decade. So we were kind of robbed of that with the Parkinson's disease. You know, Muhammad Ali, he didn't invent foot movement in the ring. But he was so stylish in the ring that the foot movement that he used, he globalized and he revitalized it to where it became so impressive when he did it that it was damn near more impressive than watching a flat-footed aggressive fighter just come straight forward with no lateral movement. Muhammad Ali, he danced in the ring. It was like the new dance move. The new dance move that never went out of style. And he coined popular phrases that we all know today, like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Rumble, young man, rumble. To this day, you have fighters that get in the ring doing the Ali Shuffle. Muhammad Ali was a heavyweight that had the agility, the foot movement, and the reflexes of a welterweight. He had the speed of a middleweight but yet the power of a heavyweight. Great combination. Muhammad Ali, he talked a lot of shit, very brash, very confident. And even though Muhammad Ali, he wasn't received the way he is today when he was in his prime, that never deterred him, that never discouraged him. He was always as confident as all get out when it was showtime, when it was time to sell a fight, when it was time for him to get in that ring and win a fight. Muhammad Ali will definitely be missed. You know, I'm just basically giving you guys my thoughts. You know, one of the greatest things about Muhammad Ali is he did not subscribe to fear or submission. He didn't ask for permission to show confidence, to show that he was just as good as
as any other man on the planet, no matter what their color was. Even today, it is almost taboo for a black man to display the type of confidence that Muhammad Ali displayed back in the Jim Crow era. You know, for the people who don't know, Muhammad Ali, not only did he win the heavyweight championship multiple times, but he also represented his country and he won a gold medal. And it still trips me out to this day, even though I know what type of country we live in and I, we all know the history of this country, but it amazes me every time I think about the fact that Muhammad Ali won a gold medal and after he won that gold medal, he came back to his own hometown, went to a restaurant to eat. And one of the servers at the restaurant was like, man, you're Muhammad Ali. You just won a gold medal, right? And Muhammad Ali was like, yeah. And he was like, congratulations, champ. But I'm sorry, you can't eat here. So even after representing his country, Muhammad Ali still couldn't even eat in a restaurant in his own hometown. For a man to go from winning the gold medal representing his country, not being accepted in his own hometown in a restaurant to go from that to becoming one of the world's biggest iconic figures. Man, that says a lot. Man, that says a lot. Talk about someone who started the race with a hell of a disadvantage, with a hell of a deficit and still manage to place first and do it by a landslide. That is TG. That is the greatest, Muhammad Ali. When black people weren't allowed to call themselves the greatest. They weren't allowed to have that type of confidence. Muhammad Ali not only told people he was the greatest, but he went in that ring and he proved that he was better than anyone in that ring. Even today, a black man is almost prohibited to say he's the greatest. He's the best ever. People like Muhammad Ali, he made his own rules. You wasn't going to tell him what to say when he could say it. Not only was he going to say it, but he was going to walk the walk. And that's what made Muhammad Ali so special. He was not going to subscribe to this fear that a lot of people today fall victim to. Muhammad Ali was not a submissive man. I'm going to close with this quote by Muhammad Ali. Live every day as if it were your last, because someday you're going to be right. That's all I got, guys. I want to say rest in peace to the greatest Muhammad Ali. You will be missed, Jack.